mind, this is part three of our Magmac tutorial series. Uh, this is a live stream that we're going to be uploading to our YouTube channel. Um, so it's, there's no script. So I apologize if I miss something or I mess something up or, you know, uh, the information is incorrect. Um, uh, this is being recorded as of development branch version 49.7. If you're in the future and you're watching this, um, your experience may be different uh, as MechHQ is constantly going through revisions and updates. So bear that in mind. All right. Uh, so for this tutorial, we're going to be going through MechHQ setup and company creation, and it's a lot easier now than it's ever been before, thanks to many of the developers that have been working on this and uh, giving it constant updates. Uh, so first, uh, let's just get right down into things um, so that you guys can make your own company and get your uh, your campaign started. So. After you've gone to the website and you've downloaded MechHQ and you've installed it and you've done the appropriate installation of the uh, the correct version of Java, which I will not go into, it's similar to MegaMac, um, you'll be greeted with this screen when you load up the executable. And as you can see right here, we have MechHQ version 0.49.7. And you're going to see four buttons. Start a new campaign, load a campaign, load last save, and quit. Uh, we're going to be starting a new campaign. So we're going to click on that button first. And it's going to greet us with the campaign preset. So these presets are subject to change, but these are the ones that they currently have available as of the recording of this video. Uh, typically nine times out of 10, you're going to want to go with ATB official options. Um, but if you're just starting out, a good idea is to use the ATP starter guide version 4.0. Uh, the reason why I say that is, is that, um, in the folder where, uh, MechHQ was installed is a docs folder and another folder inside that that says ATB stuff. You're going to be looking for a document or a PDF that specifically says against the bot starter guide version 4.pdf. Um, like I said, that's the version I'm on right now. Those of you watching in the future may have a different version. So keep that in mind. Okay. So we're going to be starting with that. So select that, highlight it, hit OK. Now we have to choose a date. Um, if you're familiar with Battletech lore, um, the game adheres to the lore as best it can within the confines of the mechanical concepts of Battletech. Uh, background lore, all that stuff. It does strictly adhere to uh, technology introduction dates. So uh, if you want to use clan technology and you're starting in the year 2500 or 2750, like Star League era, um, you're going to sadly be mistaken that your favorite dire wolf or timber wolf or shadow cat or whatever is not going to be available. So please keep that in mind when picking your starting date. Uh, by default, um, the game is automatically chosen January and 30, 35. Um, I think we'll just stick with that. So we'll pick a day and it takes it a minute to load. And we are presented with this wonderful campaign option screen. Now, I'm going to briefly go over different parts of this, starting with the general tab all the way down to the against the bot tab, which is going to be the most important if you're playing solo or you're playing co-op with friends. Um, so here we have the general tab. We have the name of your mercenary unit. We have your faction, and you can technically pick different factions, but at this point in time that I'm aware of, only mercenary function works appropriately for ATB to generate uh, opposing forces and contracts. So 
you'll probably want to just leave faction alone as default as mercenary and just move on to the next thing. Um, so next is unit rating method. Now here we have campaign ops and we have the field manual mercenaries revised book. Uh, if you're new to Battletech or Battletech rules or you just started getting into it recently, uh, I would suggest the campaign ops. Uh, it's the most recent printing of how to deal with unit rating method. Some people prefer the old method of doing unit rating from field manual mercenaries. Your mileage may vary. It's completely up to you. Uh, I use field manual mercenaries because it's a little more forgiving when it comes to um, company logistics. And it's not so punishing... Uh, when you don't have a drop ship or you're missing like 50 administrative um, personnel. But default, stick with the campaign ops, just kind of go from there. Uh, manual mun unit rating modifier that basically applies to uh, what contracts you can get, the, what are what's available. I don't mess around with that when I first start, so just leave that at zero. It'll be less of a headache down the line, trust me. And then here you can readjust your starting date, how you see fit. Um, this is the date we picked, so I'm not gonna, I'm gonna leave that alone. And then of course you can pick your camo and your unit icon. So for camo, we could use a hand of Steyr camo which is included default in the miscellaneous folder for those of you that have been watching this stream uh, on Saturday nights. Uh, we have various, and uh, the wonderful developers for Mega Mac have included our, our homebrew, non-canonical um, uh, camouflages, uh, which were made courteous of our very own uh, channel viewer, Howler, uh, who's a whiz at making these. Um, but you can find those in the miscellaneous. A little self-pimp. Never hurts. Anyway, so we'll pick this one for now. And we'll hit OK. So this uh, camo will be applied default to all units uh, when they are deployed in the Mega Mech program. Uh, and then, of course, the unit icon. I don't have any really loaded into this that I'm aware of. Uh, yeah, so we'll just leave that blank for now. Um, if you can't find a camo or a unit icon right off the bat that you want to use, that's fine. You can leave those blank. It'll just make all your units uh, a universal color, and the unit icon won't show up in your um, campaign. Those can be added later. Uh, if you jam them in a folder and you load them appropriately in the background. Uh, but I'm not going to go into that now, but that's all you need to know for the general tab. Uh, repair and maintenance, I usually, and, and this is going to sound odd, I will briefly go over some of this stuff going forward all the way to the against the bot tab. Nine times out of ten, you're going to want to leave all of the rest of these settings alone. If you want to tweak it or you know what half of this stuff does and you want to make amendments to it, that's totally fine. Um, but if you're just starting out, you're probably okay with leaving some of this alone. Now, uh, I will make note uh, what things you can turn on and turn off to make a starting experience with MechHQ a little nicer, so where the game's not punishing you, just out of the blue for no reason. Okay, so for repairs, I usually leave this alone. For maintenance, I technically turn maintenance off. If you're a new player, turn maintenance off. If you're an old hat or you know how to play Battletech, uh, you can leave it on. Uh, you can change the maintenance cycle length uh, from 30 days to 90 days to a year, whatever you want. You can change the maintenance modifiers, which some people do to make life a little easier as well. But if this is your very first MechHQ company, um, I usually would turn maintenance checks off. 
All right, next we have supplies and acquisition. This determines getting uh, or ordering parts and replacement parts for your mechs, your vehicles, and anything else mechanical. Uh, I usually don't mess with any of this. I just leave it default. Uh, it, it has, mm, I haven't really used it very much. You may later on down the line want to tweak it by adjusting using planet-based acquisition system. That kind of adds a little more lore-friendly stuff to it. And as you can see there, anything that you hover over with a check mark or pass possibly a, uh, a uh, integer that's required uh, to be input into that field sometimes has a tooltip that pops up. And you can read that to get more information. So we're gonna stick with what we've got here in supplies and acquisition. Next, we have tech limits. I usually don't mess with this, but if you're into using standard units from Battletech, uh, you could always go with units that are tried and true um, and units that you're used to. If you are new to the game, you can go with introductory. Uh, you can go with standard, which is straight across the board, standard units only. Advanced, which uh, allows you to purchase and use uh, units that would be considered advanced technology uh, compared to your starting year. So because it is 3035, it doesn't mean you can't get units that are further out um, in the tech limit. Um, as advanced technology. It's like bleeding edge technology, things that you wouldn't normally be able to get, might be a little more difficult to acquire, but they are still available as compared to standard tech. Next, we have experimental. These are mechs that have been lightly, if not tested at all, compared to your timeline. So in this case, our year is 3035 and are available, but may be extremely difficult, if not impossible, to, to uh, get. Um, your mileage may vary. If you want to include experimental, you can as well. Now, keep in mind, the higher on the scale you go, it also includes the, the, the tech levels below it. So if I were to take experimental, I would also have access to advanced tech, standard tech, and introductory tech as well. And then last but not least, we have unofficial tech, which is uh, stuff that has been added to the units that have been added to the lore that aren't traditionally normal, or in this case, UK variants. Um, but that would also include experimental, advanced, standard, and introductory tech levels. So if you want everything available to you, pick on official. If you want everything official available to you, take experimental. Uh, and then the rest of this, these have pop-ups that you can check to see. Yeah, see, it says just what it says. Uh, I, I, I do love developer humor. Next, we have personnel. Um... I don't really mess with this. Uh, the only part that I would really consider messing with is possibly uh, uh, maybe use edge for non-combat personnel, but mm, that's neither here nor there. Um, if you're just starting out, I would leave this alone. Uh, next on the bill, we have finance. Um, I usually leave this alone as well. Once again, tooltips can tell you roughly what those options mean. Next, we have mercenary. I usually end up leaving this alone. This determines contract payments and contract availability. Next, we have experience. Uh, I usually leave this alone as well. You can always customize skill costs. Uh, if there's one thing that Mega, Mega Mech and Mech HQ has taught me, it's a very malleable program to suit your needs, depending upon what you or your friends want to uh, do with it. Next, we have skills. Never mess with this. Leave it at default. You don't really need to mess with it. Uh, special abilities, same thing. 
um, unless you're adding a special ability from a newly published or unpublished document that adds more unofficial abilities uh, to make HQ for your pilots to be able to use. Uh, next, we have skill randomization. I usually don't mess with this. If you don't, if you want extra randomness on your skills when the pilots are generated for on the unit market or the personnel market, I should say, you can always check mark extra randomness. Uh, next, we have rank systems. I usually just leave this alone. Uh, you can pick different rank systems if you want more flavorful lore for your ranks in your campaign. Uh, default is the Star League Defense Force, but you can go with Clan, ComGuard, or any of the other houses or minor houses. It's completely up to you. But I usually stick with what we've got. Next, we have Name and Portrait Generation. Um, I just leave this the way it is. <clears throat> this determines the... Um, uh, percentage of gender that are generated and or you know as it says there are the origin faction for assigned names um you can uncheck that and you can pick a specific faction if you would prefer most of your unit's names come from a certain culture or faction and then down here this will generate portraits and of course as it states here this setup is explained in the guide located in docs windchild's guides windchild's guide to mac hq portrait generation there you go next we have markets um dylan's is a good method but it's very forgiving if you're just starting out i would leave this alone if you want something a little more atb oriented you could go with atb or you could go with mercenaries version found in field Man manual mercenaries revised or you could go with the way that personnel market uh is generated aka by strategic operations book which is the newest one um but for the sake of this tutorial, uh, I would just leave it as is. Next, random assignment tables. Don't touch it unless you know what you're doing. Don't mess with it. Leave it alone. It'll, it's going to do what you want it to do for your campaign. You don't need to mess with it. And last but not least, this is the tab I'm going to go over through thoroughly. Um, this tab shows you all the ATB options. So obviously by default, we're using a against the bot campaign rules. Your skill level. Um, if this is your first mercenary company, do ultra green. If you've done one or two under your belt and want to start a new one, you could go with green and regular. If you're using the Stratcon uh, rules for Mech HQ, which are only became available in version 49.x. Uh, you could easily leave it on regular. Uh, Stratcon is experimental and it's very much an alpha as of this recording and it is continually being improved upon. Uh, it just takes time to work on it. It's a brand new system. So if you're not sure, just leave it as regular move on unit administration um i usually don't mess with this i mean you can you can go through the various options and read the tool tips uh it's up to you um but i would leave that alone to be frankly honest uh up next we have scenarios these are typically how some of the scenarios are generated for the op four um you could easily leave this alone. Uh, if you want more mechs than vehicles, uh, you could swap these to vehicles three, or excuse me, it would be mechs three, vehicles one, and then that would give you more mechs than vehicles. I usually leave mixed at two. The tool tip will tell you more. 
uh, if you want to allow enemy forces to have VTOLs, uh, if you want to allow them to have aerotech fighters, if you want to allow them to have turrets and infantry, um, and then the rest of these adjust lance weight for player vehicles. I would leave that alone. Varied weight distributions by faction. I would leave that alone. Player controlled allied units uses players camouflage. That's kind of just what suits your taste. <coughs> Otherwise, the um, allied units, uh, the player controlled ally units will be using their own faction's camouflage, depending upon how you set that up. But that would be on a contract by contract basis. And we'll get into that later. Uh, all attached allied units are player controlled. If you're not, if you don't want to worry about house or um, player controlled allied units during a scenario, you can check mark that and it will make sure that all allied units are controlled by you. Use drop ships. Um, if you're starting out, I would leave that off. Drop ships, drop ships can be an extremely heavy handed unit to include in a drop. Um, if you know what you're doing, turn it on. If you're new, I would leave it off. Uh, next we have use weather conditions, use light conditions, and use planetary conditions. I'll briefly go over this. Uh, weather conditions, weather can include rain, snow, tornadoes, high winds, uh, you name it. Uh, those will pop up in the scenarios that you will be playing as they get generated in ATB. Uh, they can be a severe detriment or they can be a minor annoyance. Uh, nine times out of 10, they're gonna be, it's gonna be normal weather. Uh, but you do have that occasional weirdly generated scenario that has a F5 tornado involved. Um, if you don't want to mess with that, turn it off. It's up to you. Light conditions. Um, this one includes different conditions such as daylight, dusk, dawn, uh, moonless night, uh, pitch black. Those conditions can affect your pilot's uh, ability to hit things with, with uh, your weapons and or affect your ability to move at a normal speed for that unit. Uh, if you don't want to worry about it, obviously turn it off. And then last but not least, uh, planetary conditions. Planetary conditions cover a lot of different things, but what they mainly cover is gravity and atmosphere. Uh, gravity can affect the movement of each of your units. Um, light gravity, if I'm not mistaken, increases the ability of your units to move, but also makes it a little more dangerous if you do mo move at those faster speeds. Whereas heavier gravity it decreases a unit's movement and also makes it more difficult to use jump jets. Uh, atmosphere can affect, as far as I know, uh, thin atmosphere can affect uh, things such as fuel air bombs or anything that's mostly dependent upon oxygen to operate. Um, you can turn that off as well. Once again, your mileage may vary. Next up, we have fixed map chance. Uh, ATB will procedurally and randomly generate a map um, most of the time. Uh, you can have it draw from the pre-made list of maps that are included in MechHQ, and this is the percentage chance that it will draw on one of those pre-made maps. If you like pre-made maps and you don't like procedurally generated terrain, crank it up to a higher percentage. If you want everything procedurally generated, crank it down or just put it at zero. It's up to you. Next, we have the contract operations. This is kind of the meat and potatoes of what you're gonna run into when ATB is randomly generating a scenario. And I'll briefly go over this as well. Contract search radius. This is the amount of light years in which ATB looks for available contracts based upon your current interstellar location. Um, 
And just to give you a rough idea, your interstellar location could be anywhere in the intersphere. Nine times out of ten, it's going to be close to Terra or Outreach. Um, and a jump ship can travel up to 30 light years. And that will be evident on the interstellar map when we get into Mech HQ proper uh, by a faded white circle around your current location. That is your overall jump range. So when it says 800 light years, take 800 and divide it by 30. That's how many jumps will be required up to the maximum contract search radius uh, that you will have to do. If you don't want to jump that far, you can turn it down, but don't be surprised when you don't have very many contracts to pick from. By default, 800's pretty good. It's a little big for my taste, but your mileage may vary. Next, we have a variable contract length, mercenary company size limits, restrict parts by mission, uh, limit lance deployment by weight, and limit lance deployment by size. I wouldn't mess with any of that, to be frankly honest. Uh, if you don't like being penalized for doing raid contract missions, uh, I would turn off restrict parts by mission uh, because your CPA or campaign parts availability will drop significantly during a raid contract. And it will be very difficult to get your hands on replacement parts to fix some of your damaged units. Um, limit lance by weight and size. I would leave those off to start just to make life easier for you. And mercenary company size limits. I don't really see that being a problem. Um, so I would leave those as default. Uh, unit organization. This, um, I wouldn't really mess with. I've never personally had to mess with it myself. I just leave it as default. And next, we'll go over, uh, battle intensity. Um, I would leave that at one. And then the chance of battle by roll. If you want to change what fights are going to be more prevalent, uh, you can change those. Think of those numbers as percentages. Um, but as you do edit those, it will change the intensity. So if you're getting a lot of battles and you don't want that many because you're having a hard time keeping up with repairs or anything else in your campaign, you can crank the intensity down and it will drop all of those uh, battles uh, accordingly. Uh, and then you click update intensity from battle rolls and it will also update the intensity so you can go vice versa It's up to you um, But as default it works. You're gonna see a lot more recon and uh, Fight battles than you will defense battles or training battles And then if you want it to generate chase missions because you hate yourself You can always check mark that me personally I hate chase missions with every fiber of my being as with a few handful of people that I've talked to They have told me turn it off turn it off now. I don't want to do them um, By default it is off, but if you want to include chase missions in your campaign you can turn it right back on and last but not least, and probably the most important change as of version 49.x is the use of the Stratcon campaign rules. Um, I won't be explicitly going over Stratcon today, um, but <laughs> you can turn them on and play around with them if you wish. Uh, but I will not be going over Stratcon in this, this uh, part of the tutorial series. All right, so once you're happy with all of your campaign options and your settings, you can just click Confirm. Give it a minute. And it loads you into the campaign proper. So I'm going to go over some of the UI elements here, and then we're going to make ourselves a company using the brand new company generator that was included in version 49.x. Uh, it will be uh, tweaked and updated as time goes on, or at least that's what Windchild told me. Um, but uh, I, I have faith that it is the best tool to quickly and easily generate a company, and I'll be briefly going over that as well 
uh, before the end of this video. But to start, we're going to quickly go over the UI elements and MechHQ. Um, if I need to expand on an element, um, I will be doing that at a, in a later video, but this is just a quick overview for those of you that are new to the software. So in the command center, we have <clears throat> we have your daily activity log, your basic unit information, any available reports in case you want to know what's going on with your transport capacity, your hangar, your personnel, your cargo, and your unit rating details. Here we you can find units, find parts, parts needed, parts in use, mass repair and salvage, and you can also do instant mass repair and salvage. This one brings up a window that allows you to tweak who and what is supposed to repair different units. Um, the basic unit information is very useful, shows your unit rating, your overall average experience of your unit, your mission success rate, types of personnel, your unit composition, your transport capacity, and your cargo that you're hauling around with you. This kind of gives you a synopsis of what your unit's all about. Next, we have the TONE. The TONE is kind of like the bread and butter of a Mech HQ company. Um, it allows you to organize units into lances, into companies, into um, aerospace flights. Uh, if you want more information on those rules, I would highly suggest you check a uh, campaign operations book. That'll give you more of a detailed insight on how they that is done inside Battletech. Um, but that's this is the meat and potatoes. Um, and we're going to be coming back to this after we generate a company. Um, your briefing tab is going to include current contracts and missions that you are currently partaking in. Uh, this will be the overall contract here. This will show you your current selected scenario, and this will show you your contract, current contract deployment requirements. And we'll be going over this as well again after we've generated a company. Your interstellar map. We are starting on Galatea. This is the inner sphere. If you're at all familiar with Battletech, this will look, this will look familiar. Uh, there's various things you can do with this. Uh, if you go down here to the right tab, you can change the color by faction, technology, industry, raw materials, output, agriculture, population, HPG, and recharge station. Me, personally, I don't like seeing empty systems because they're empty. Some people do. And I love ISW areas because it kind of gives me a rough idea of the various factions and their borders, roughly. So we have Steiner, the FRR, Dorita, Davion, Merrick, and down here we have Leo. And of course, the various sub factions. Now, if you want any information on a system specifically, you can just click on it, uh, where's Terra? And it shows all the information right here that you could ever possibly want. And, or, uh, you have uh, possibly GM tools at your disposal, but you can zoom in, zoom out, you can center, uh, you can save the entire map as a um, yeah, 64 MPX at current zoom level. And then GM mode, you can automatically move uh, your current position to that planet that you have selected, or you can instantly recharge your jump drive. It's up to you. You're the game master. Um, next, we have the personnel tab. This will show you all of your current personnel. You can sort it up here by personnel type. You can sort it by view. Uh, I usually leave it on general. You can do it by graphic. And group by unit. This is very useful for if you have uh, infantry platoons. So it won't show every single unit in the infantry platoon. It will just show the platoon commander as one entry. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to understand and to figure out. And then obviously those, this information will, this area will have all of whatever personnel type you have filtered. 
in here and then if you make a selection it will show that that personnel on the right hand side and their battle record their use and service and we'll look at that again after i've generated a company using the company generator next we have the hanger similar um as the similar to the personnel tab but here you can um, filter it by different unit types and obviously view here in the warehouse this shows all of your stored equipment whether it's damaged or fresh ammo armor all sorts of stuff um but genuinely it's, it's going to be sorted by all parts you can filter it by different parts and their part status next up we have the repair bay um if you have automated repairs turned on you probably won't have to mess with this too much this screen will be very valuable when you've done a drop and some of your units have been damaged destroyed and you are either repairing salvaging or trying to put stuff back together and i will go over that maybe in a future video um but this is a very important screen just like the infirmary screen if any of your pilots or um, units are wounded, like the actual people piloting those units, uh, you'll have a list of doctors here that you can click on and assign wounded that'll be in the lower part to the upper part. And then that those wounded units will be assigned to that specific doctor that you have selected using the assign and unassigned buttons. Next, we have the mech lab. Don't mess with it unless you actually make custom units for your campaign. I don't mess with this. Um, if you're just starting with Mech HQ, I wouldn't mess with it either, unless you're familiar with Battletech construction rules or making tanks and mechs and various other things. Last but not least, the finances tab. This um, basically shows. Um, C bill expenditures, uh, where you got C bills from, payments, payments to your unit personnel, and various other ins and outs for your cash. Uh, over here to the right, it gives you pretty much a good breakdown of where all the money is coming and going from. And then down here, yes, you can take loans. If you're in the red when it comes to c bills you can take loans <laughs> um i've never had to take a loan if you don't know what you're doing with that and it's your first time with mech hq uh, i wouldn't mess with it if you're in the red when it comes to c bills maybe come in here and click gm mode up here and hit add funds and give yourself a little boost or it's time to retire that mercenary company and start a new one. <laughs> but you can get loans by clicking on this button. It's up to you. Um, yeah, there you go. And last but not least, uh, up over here we have GM mode, which I just flipped on. Uh, I usually typically leave that on so you can kind of, and I hate to use the word cheat, um, but if you need to nudge and or make adjustments to things, this is a good option to have on at all times. Um, if you're tied in the wool and I don't cheat and I'm going to play the game as is, you can obviously leave that off. But the button is available. Uh, allow overtime is a useful button if you want to turn that on. Uh, in the repair bay, it will work your mech techs and mechanics and repair people over time. I typically leave that off, but if you're in a bind, um, you can turn it on. And then last but not least, let me get back to the command center here. We have advanced day. This is really useful for advancing the day. And then up here at the top, it shows, shows the name of your mercenary company, the day, the date, and roughly what era you're in, uh, according to Battletech lore and background. And then here we have the personnel market on the command tab. This is where you can order and add new units, personnel, 
and uh, go hunting for contracts that are currently available. And you can click on them and it'll show you all the information and their payout and all that wonderful stuff. Obviously this says zero because we don't have a company generated yet. That's coming up next. <laughs> all right. Company generation is actually super easy compared to in the old days where we would go through a document and have to do everything by hand. Not so more in the new version 49 plus. So if you want to make a company, after you've gotten to this screen, you just come up here to manage campaign, company generator, click on it. And all of this is set to a default values and checkboxes. Some parts of this, as of this recording, have not been implemented. Windchild says that he's working on it. But if you have no idea how any of this stuff works, leave it alone. Don't touch it. If you want to mess with it and tweak it and mess with it and do all sorts of fun stuff with it, and this does have applicable tooltips that you can look at, um, be my guest. But if you're very new, straight out of the gate, don't mess with it. Just hit generate. Boom. <laughs> Man, if we had this back in older versions, my life would be so much easier. So if we go to the TONE here, we see we have Able Company with Able Lance and Baker Lance and Charlie Lance. And it shows their rank, their unit, and obviously what Lance are in. As we have Mayor Fukio Watanabe. Um, Major, that, that it's, I, I said Mayor. Um, and over here you can see the pilot, the personnel log, all the skills and all the fun stuff. And right here you can see what unit they're piloting. They are currently piloting a Wolverine 6R. And you can go to the various other people. And as you'll see, they all have portraits. They all have different genders. They all are in different lances. It's fun. Next. Briefing room. Obviously, there's nothing here except the new units, the lances that we generated are showing up here. It's a... Uh, Let's go back to the command center and find us a contract. Oh, look, this all got populated all of a sudden. So at this point in time, we can work for the Federated Sons and it generated either a garrison duty uh, against the Outworld Alliance or pirate hunting against pirates. Here, we'll be losing money if we take this contract, or if we do garrison duty, we'll be losing a little less money. I don't know why the estimated profits are like that, but if you're like, screw these, I don't want to do these, then you can hit GM mode turn on, hit generate GM, and it will make more contracts. Look at that. Look at all these contracts popping up. Oh my gosh. Um, sorry. I'm having fun with it. And then you can go through the various contracts. Oh, there's a six mil. Hmm. Where was that six mil? Hey, look at that. A garrison duty for House Merrick against House Steiner. So we can hit accept. And if you want to know where it's located, oh, it's in the system of Savannah. And that is four jumps away. You can click on that. Obviously, we're taking that contract. Oh, and there's Savannah. Where are we located? We are currently on the, in the system of Galatea, but we want to be here. So we'll hit Calculate Jump Path and hit Begin Transit. And then we have to advance day until we get there. And we'll be doing that here shortly. The personnel tab is obviously been populated. And here you can also see we have a doctor and we have various mech techs assigned to the various mechs to keep them in working order. 
And then we have an administrator that deals with our logistics. Uh, here in the hangar, you can see we have all of our mechs, their weight class, their status, who they're assigned to, what force they're in, and their tech that was assigned to them. Uh, next, we have our warehouse fully furnished with leftover parts in case something breaks later. Uh, company generator added those as well. Our repair bay, there's nothing damaged yet. And there's nobody that needs to be assigned to our doctor at the moment. All right, so why don't we advance the time and get to Savannah. And as you see, as I hit advanced day, you'll see current location Galatea in transit to Savannah, 12 days out, and it says 100 charged. So now we're in Alioth, and the jump ship is currently charging again. 58, 73, 88, jumped again. So now we're in FECTA, or FESA, FESDA. And we charge again, and it jumps again. Now you see this white circle I mentioned earlier in this broadcast, or in this video? This is a 30 year, 30 light year jump range. That is an immutable fact. All jump ships can jump a maximum of 30 light years in Battletech. So this determines what planets you can jump to in one jump. It's charging again before we hit Savannah. All right, so now we've jumped into the system and we're still 6.41 days out. How is that? Aren't we there? Well, we have jumped into the system, but Savannah is the third planet from the current star in that system. So it takes time for us to get there. So there's the jump ship. There's our transport dropship vessel and there's Savannah. So as we advance day, five days out, four days out, three days out, two days out, one day out, half a day out, and now we're on planet. And that drum ship is currently charging. All right, so we're on planet. Now what do we do for our first contract? I'm glad you asked. So as you can see here, here's our contract information. But there's no drops, Joker. Hmm. You're right, there's not. Now what's this red text down here? This is what is referred to as deployment requirements. These have to be assigned before it will generate, before the contract will start, and ATB will start generating scenarios. So we need a total of two assigned lances, and one of them has to be set to defend. Okay, so how about we assign our heavy lance to defend, and let's assign our medium lance to fight. Oh, now they're not red anymore. We could stop there, but I want to include Charlie Lance as well. I want Charlie Lance to see some action, so we'll assign them to scout. Deployment requirements is the bare minimum that must be deployed in order to satisfy the contract in order to continue to generate scenarios for it. So now that we've successfully satisfied the requirements for this deployment and the start date for this contract is the 10th of February and it is currently February 10th, then we just start advancing the day. And you can see here it's generated three drops. Now, if you're using um, Stratcon, this will work completely differently. I will be making a Stratcon tutorial in the near future, but this is for default ATB. So as you can see here, we have three pending scenarios. We have one that is in four days on the 20th, one in five days on the 21st, 
and one in six days on the 22nd. You'll also see the different lances that have been, have been assigned to these, these three scenarios. So if we select hide and seek attacker on the first one, you'll see that we are the attacker and the uh, Lyrans are the defender or the enemy. Here at the top, you'll see three folders. Here you'll see allied forces that are joining you on this scenario. In this case, the uh, Free Worlds League have sent a wasp with us. Eh. And then the opposing force, main opposing force, is a grasshopper, a griffin, a phoenix hawk, and another phoenix hawk. But they have reinforcements as well. And another lance of mechs. Ooh, that's going to be difficult. And all of that, both those lances will be fighting Charlie Lance. Good luck. <laughs> Here you'll see uh, the map terrain for the drop. Roughly what the map is going to include, the map size, the light conditions for the map, and the weather conditions for the map, wind, and if there's any fog, current gravity, and the current atmosphere, and which section of the map you're starting on. And then below it, you'll see rerolls. These rerolls are your tactics score for the Lance Commander in Charlie Lance. So he has a tactics of one, if I'm not mistaken. Which one is? Oh, here he is. Yes. And you'll see that Lieutenant Sakani has a tactics value of one, which allows her, if we go back to the briefing tab, one reroll. You can reroll any of these that you want. So you're like, hey, I don't want to fight in rain. So you click on that, hit reroll. And now the rain has stopped and you have clear conditions in the daylight on this map size with this map in this terrain type. Below you'll see various uh, details and information on how to win the drop or win the scenario. Um, Mega Mech doesn't exactly check those values. You will have to check those values yourself. Uh, and especially in the post drop screen. Uh, I won't be going through post-drop screen right now. If you've seen any of my prior videos uh, for our Saturday night campaign play, uh, the post-drop screen will make more sense. <laughs> um, so here it says, the following units deployed by your employer must survive. Each one destroyed results in one point penalty to your contract score, which is located... Well, it's supposed to be located over here. But I guess not. Once again, development branch currently in development. Bear with us. Uh, destroy or cripple force with withdrawal. Uh, force the withdrawal of at least 50% of the following enemy force. They are in Commonwealth. Uh, these wonderful people right here. And these guys as well. Um, ensure that at least 66% individual units from the following forces and units survive your ally, and Charlie Lance. Winner controls the battlefield after the battle, so whoever wins can claim battlefield salvage. So that's how that works. Now, if you'll notice, this drop happens on the 20th. It is currently the 16th up here. So if we advance the day, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, You'll see it's assigned Charlie Lance. And all these values are set in stone. Everything's ready to go. And I'm not going to hit it, but once you hit start game, it will load you, load you into the Mega Mech lobby with all of the units preloaded, ready to go. Basically, all you have to do is hit I'm done in the bottom right hand corner, and it will load you into your drop, and you're, you'll be able to play your game. And Princess Bot will be playing the op for or the opposing force. And then once that's done, you'll go through the post drop screen and then it will disconnect you and close out of Mega Mech and load you back into Mech HQ. And it will give you the resolution, whether you picked victory, whether you picked defeat, what happened. It's all up to you on how you want to spin that. 
Um, and it will then add injured people to your infirmary. It will add uh, damaged mechs to your uh, repair bay where you'll have to click on them, see what things need to be repaired, and then you can choose your technicians on the right and who to repair them. This will give you your target number on two six-sided dice on what you have to roll in order to repair that unit. Um, and also if you're missing parts, which sometimes that happens, you can click on this screen and it will show you a list of things that you're missing that you need to order and you can order them right from this screen and uh, they'll either be available or they won't be available depending upon what contract you're on and what your current campaign parts of availability is. And then those will be in transit and then they'll show up and then you can repair them and put those parts back on or reload those ammo bins or do whatever it is you need to do and get your force back in into fighting shape where you can continue to do more drops. Okay, this tutorial has been, part three has been going on for an hour now, so I think I need to cut it off here. But uh, there's going to be more uh, Mech HQ uh, fun and tutorial stuff in this series. I don't know which tutorial I'm going to do next, so if anybody has any suggestions, please feel free to let me know. You can either send me an email or you can join us on our Filthy Casual Discord server. Uh, or you can ask your questions live on Twitch while I'm live on Fridays and Saturday nights starting at 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, and stop on by, introduce yourself, and ask your questions. Uh, but that's all I got for now. So thank you guys for watching this extremely overly long video. I hope it was helpful. Uh, like I said, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I will do my best to try to ask them. Uh, if you have any in-depth uh, questions about Battletech and or the um, Mega Mac uh, suite of software, I highly encourage you go to the Mega Mac website. That is megamech.org, M-E-G-A-M-E-K.org. And they have a link to their Discord uh, on their website. And you can go into their Discord and talk with other like-minded Mega Mac people and uh, talk with the developers as well and get insights on and uh, hopefully answers to your questions that pop up. But that's it, that's me for me for now. Keep your eyes peeled for the next Mega Mac tutorial. I don't know when it's gonna be, uh, but uh, thank you so much. Take care Mech Warriors and I'll see you next time.